Hey everybody, so today I want to talk about what I'm going to be calling the homecoming transitions. And the reason I call it that is because it's based on a TV series called Homecoming. And there's a really cool sequence in, I think, the 10th episode of season one. And it's a whole bunch of transitions like you see here. And all these transitions are really sort of all based around the same theme. And what I wanted to do is develop a bit of a system where you can very easily set up transitions that look like this. So as a prerequisite to this video, I did a video last week that you might want to check out. There's a link in the top of the screen right now that talks about adding controls to different nodes within Fusion. And we're going to be using that feature today. So that being said, let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are kind of at the finished product. So this is a template that's sort of been set up ready to animate. And if you look at the inspector up here on the right, you can kind of see the controls that we're going to be using for this. Uh, down here is the node structure. We'll get into this in details for now. I'm just going to turn this off so we can sort of focus on the top to sort of show what it does. So what I've done is I've, I've set up the edit controls feature to sort of set up this control panel here. And this control panel, uh, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Um, so I've broken things up into six segments here. And each of these segments is essentially a mask and I'll show how we're going to develop that later. So the controls are the horizontal bar left control over here. Moves that one around. There's the one in the middle. And then there's the one in the right. And then I have these two vertical bars here. And we can move these sort of back and forth however we want as well. We can also control the bar thickness here. And I'm just going to leave it at the default value that I've set it at here. Each of these here is keyframable, so we can get a whole bunch of different effects that way. If we don't like the six segments, that's no problem. What we can do is I can just take the vertical bar left and I can move that over here. Vertical bar right, move that over here. And then we just can use this bar in the middle to sort of control if I wanted to do to do just a wipe this way or something like that. So there's a whole bunch of different options that we get just from this very simple set of controls. So let's get into it and we'll see how this is made. All right, so let's take a look at the node structure now. So I have this set up into two main sections here. So this top section here, this is effectively the stuff in the background. So if I show this merge five over here, that's all uh, the clips and they're all defined by a number of masks. And I'll get into each of these in a second. But that top section really is what's sort of underlying. Then these black bars are this section over here. So I'm going to just drag this merge control up here. So now we can see sort of the two realms. So I'm looking at this merge five over here. So this is the final merge through this series of merges that merges these six images together. And then I'm looking at merge nine over on the right side of the screen here. And that's merging all these different masks together. And these masks help define these bars. Then I bring both of those worlds together in this node here, which I call MC. And I pick the, the name MC. So MC for me stands for Merge Control. It's a merge node and it's also a control node. And this node has a very specific important purpose. When I click on this, this is where I've decided to assign my control panel to. And we're gonna go through that, how that's set up in a few minutes. But the reason that I chose a sort of unreadably short name that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense is because I'm gonna be using this in a bunch of other expressions. So for example, if I go over to this mask node here and I look at some of these expressions that we're gonna be getting into a little bit, I wanted something really short or these expressions are just gonna to be too long and things get a little bit confusing to read. So why did I choose this node here as the control panel, so to speak, where I added these custom controls too? really just an arbitrary choice. You could really pick anything. It just sort of makes that made sense because it's sort of something that's kind of at the end of the, the stream. A couple of other ways you can probably do this is group this entire thing and then you can assign controls to that group. So I did experiment with that a little bit and I found that it works until you try to animate things. So that's when I sort of stepped back and I said, you know what, let's just keep this simple. I'm going to assign custom controls to this merge node here. So this is my most important node in the sense that that's where I serve up the interface for it. And if you take a look up here, this here says user, that's where I've signed all these custom controls to. So it's sort of separate from all the different uh, regular merge controls. Okay, so let's start walking through this top section here. And again, this top section here, I'm gonna put merge five up on the, on the right here. So that's all our different clips. So first off here, we have all these different clip controls. These are basically media in nodes. And all I've done is assign different clips to them. So right now my project is set to 19, if I just zoom out here, my project is set to 1920 by, by 1080. Each of these clips also happen to be 1920 by 1080. To separate them into chunks, I've used different masks. So let's take a look at this top one here. So I'm going to take this mask control here, drag it up here. So that mask corresponds to the top left here. 
And if I look at this clip here and drag it over here, now we see just that little piece of the clip. So that's an important point to keep in mind. I've essentially cut off a whole bunch of this clip that's over here. And I'm going to show you what we can do a little bit later. We can add some transform nodes where we can start to play with that. So I can sort of do some zooms and, and pans and, and some different stuff within this mask space. But for right now, to keep things simple, what I've done is I've just said, okay, you know what? That clip is going to take over the whole, our whole screen here but we're going to use the mask just to so, show a, a particular part of it. Let me just zoom in here on this top so it's a little easier to see. And that same methodology applies to all these nodes down the line here. And my naming convention is mask TL for top left, bottom left, top middle, bottom middle, top right, bottom right. And same thing with the naming convention for the clips. So if I come down here to clip top right, there's my top right mask and my clip for the top right as well. And here's a series of merge nodes. I have multiple merge nodes because in the realm of 2D, you can only have two inputs, a foreground and, and a background, essentially. There's also this effects mask input, but as far as merging different things together, you can only do two at a time, so that's why I had to sort of cascade this. What you can do if, if you want to clean this up a little bit is just sort of select everything, control G, and I can kind of make my own little multi-merge node. But to keep things clear, I'm just going to keep it expanded like this. So if we come down and we look at our masks now, and we take this merge over here, so the white is what's defining our, our, our masks. So if I click on this merge node over here, and I play with these controls, I'm actually moving those mask values around. So I have a background node over here that's fully black, and then I've merged all these different masks together. And these masks here are essentially these little chunks of bars here. And the way this background works is when I move things into the effects mask, I'm basically saying, okay, anything that's white, that's what we're gonna let through. So that's where, when we come up to this merge node here, which I'm gonna put over in this viewer, these bars here are actually the black background that's coming through as defined by this white mask over here. So if we go back and we look at the two domains together, so the clip domain over here with no bars on it, and over here we'll just put the mask, you'll notice that these clips are all sort of butted up against each other. So if you start to make these bars really thick using this merge control here, just keep in mind that you're sort of cutting off some of these clips here. Okay, so I rearranged everything a little bit and I used these underlay controls here to help kind of group things a little bit. And if you want to use these, you just go shift spacebar, type in underlay. And again, the top section here is just for the clips, and the bottom section here is just for the bars. So we're going to look at those in a little bit of detail now. So now let's take a look how these sliders are actually tied into these masks. First, we can cross a whole bunch of stuff off the list for stuff that we have to kind of worry about here. So everything that you see here, everything that I'm highlighting right now, is straight default out of the box. All I did was change the names on these. The only thing that we're doing some tweaks to are all these masks over here. And those masks all have their position as well as their XY dimensions tied to this slider over here. And let's go through that in a second. But let me just bring this back up here. So what we're looking at now on the left screen over here is this merge node here. So this is just the final output of all this, all these clips. And over here is this black background here, which is just showing the bars. Now I have my control node over here selected, and I am going to move this uh, horizontal bar left. So that's this one here. So notice when I move that, it's changing the mask for this clip here and this clip here, and it's moving this bar here, and this bar is another mask. So it's really as simple as that. All we're doing with these sliders here is controlling where these masks are. And remember, if we take a look at this top left clip here, for example, I'm going to set this back. I'm going to bring this all the way down here. And then I'm going to take this bar here, or this bar here, I suppose, and slide it all the way to the, to the right. So that's my vertical bar left. And there, we see that our full clip is sort of lying underneath. So when we go back to the default values, we're just showing that little piece of the clip sort of peeking out. And we're going to get into the transforms in that in just a moment. But first, let's go through the math. So let me just zoom in here on the clips. I'm going to select this clip over here, which is the top left, left clip only. And let's break that down, how that's sort of hooked up. So I go into the mask here, 
and I take a look at the center, width, and the height. So what I've done is I, set, I have set up expressions for center, width, and height. And to set up an expression, you just essentially right click on any control and you come down here and you say expression and it'll add one of these uh, text boxes where you can enter your expression into. So let's take a look at these here. Let's start with width because it's pretty simple. So width, all width is looking at is MC, which is our control node over here, dot bar VL. So bar VL is my vertical left bar. That's what VL stands for under my naming convention. So that's this bar here. So when I move this bar here back and forth, left and right, it's going to be changing the width of this over here. So let's take a look at bar VL. Where does that really come from? Okay, let's go into our mask uh, control here, or sorry, emerge control. And we have bar VL. Well, I don't see any bar VL here. I see a vertical bar left, which corresponds to this bar here. So yeah, I think that's the one. So where does bar VL come from? Okay, so I'm going to right click on this, this node here. I'm going to come up to edit controls. That opens this dialog here and I'll come down to ID. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open ID and I'm going to scroll down until I find until I find bar VL. So that's it right there. So I click on that. So its ID is bar VL, but its name is vertical bar left. So the name is what shows up over here, but the ID is what I use to reference it. So that's nice. So I can have a little bit more of a descriptive name here, but I can have a shorter name that I can put into my expressions to keep my expressions a little bit compact. And then I set up my default value, which is 0.33, because remember this vertical bar left is one third across the screen here. And I'm going to set up my, my range to be zero and one. So let me cancel this here. And the reason I chose zero to one is because of our coordinate system here. So remember how our coordinate system works. Down here is our origin, zero, zero, and up in the top right here is 1, 1. So when we're talking about this vertical bar here, well, it's a vertical bar, but it's only going to be moving in this x direction here. If I set it to 0, you can see a little black outline just on the left side of the screen. And when I move things across to 1, well, that's going to sit on fully on the other side of the screen. So that's why I picked the default value of 0.33, because that's a third of the way across the screen. So that's pretty simple. What are we doing here? OK, well, we're setting up the width of this mask here to be this value here, 0.33. Right now it's 0.33, it runs up to a third of the screen. If I change this up to a one, we're the full width of the screen. So that one's pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at the height. We have one minus MC bar HL. Okay, so let's forget the one for a minute. MC dot bar HL, what is that? Okay, well that's sort of the same thing, but now it's our bar HL, horizontal left. And that's right up here, horizontal bar left. So that's this one here. So it's a horizontal bar, but notice it's going to move in this vertical direction as, as I move things. And again, we go from 0 to 1 here on the y-axis. So when I set this down to 0, because our origin is defined down at the bottom, that's where the 1 minus comes from. So right now, 1 minus this value is 1. So my height is the full height of the, of the screen in this case. Conversely, if I go down to here to 1, well, 1 minus 1 is 0, so my height is now 0. All right, so we covered the width and we covered the height. Now let's take a look at the center value here. And the center value is given by an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. And this expression down here, I'm just going to pull it up into WordPad here so it's a little bit easier to read. Essentially, that's talking about a point. The way the point syntax works, it's really quite simple. It's just point x comma y. In this case here, this is our x coordinate and this is our y coordinate. So what I've done to sort of show this a little bit easier is I've, I've kind of come up with the simplified structure that you see over here. And all I did is I took this first mask here, this top left mask, and that's over here. So I've kind of got rid of all this. And then down here, I've essentially just pulled this bar and this bar. So that's just two of these five bars. And then I kept the background as well. And then I put that into a merge node here, which is our MC node. That's the control node. I kind of stole it from over here for now. There's also a bunch of stuff that I have over here on the right. All that is, that's just responsible for the text that I'm showing up here. And what that text up top is, is the value of the horizontal bar left. So that's the horizontal bar on the left side. And then this vertical bar on the left as well. That's this one here. So when I take the horizontal bar left and I move it left and right, you're just going to see 
you're going to see this value here change. What I've also done, I've taken this clip and I've just taken the width and the height just temporarily and I've made them really small just to sort of make it look like a point source because the way I've sort of done things is for each of these quadrants, if you think of this here as a, as a quadrant, we're talking about this top left mask right now, which is this mask TL. The midpoint of this mask is always going to be directly in the middle of this rectangle that's created by these two bars here. So I'll grab our control node. And so when I move the, the bar left, you'll see wherever I move that bar, the, mi the middle of this mask is always going to be in the middle of this space here. And same thing when I move this, uh, this vertical bar here. It's always going to sort of sit in the middle. So once we understand that's how things work, the math comes, comes pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to pick some, some values that are a little bit cleaner to work with. So I'll take 0.5 and 0.5. So let me just bring this expression back on the screen here. So first let's take a look at our X coordinate here. So that's pretty straightforward, this one here. So let's copy this down online here. So this here, all we're doing is we're taking our bar vertical left and we're dividing it by two. So our bar vertical left is this here. And we look at vertical bar left, which is 0.5. And remember, we're talking about the x-axis here, so 0.5 over on the x-axis. We divide that by 2, that brings us down to 0.25. So that one's pretty straightforward. And the reason that one's straightforward is because this little quadrant here is kind of tucked close into the origin. We don't have to kind of get fancy with this 1 minus type stuff that we're going to get into when we start talking about the y-coordinate. So let's get into the y-coordinate. And remember, it's just this chunk here that we want to focus on. And so now this becomes pretty straightforward. So we have our horizontal bar left. So that's this bar here, and it's set up to 0.5. So that's this value here, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 plus. And then we have 1 minus that same value. So what that is is 1, because we're sort of looking at the top of the screen now, minus this value here. So that's 1 minus 0.5. 1 minus 0 0.5 then our closing bracket. And then we have this divided by two. So what's that divided by two really doing? Well, let's take a look at this here. So if we're just looking at this section here, let's forget about this 0.5 at, at the start here. We just want to look at one minus the 0 0.5. Well, essentially what that's doing, that's saying one, which is up here, minus the value of this current bar here. And remember, we're just setting the Y coordinate right now. So we have one minus 0 0.5, which is 0 0.5. And then we divide that value by two, which is 0.25. But if we were just at 0.25 on the y-axis, that would bring us up to here. That's where this 0.5 comes from. Since our origin is sort of down below here, we have to offset things. That's why I have this 0.5 at the start. So that 0.5 pushes things up to here. So that's all it is. I'm not going to go through each of these little segments, but that's really the philosophy for each of these things. As really what we want to do is for each of these regions that we're working in, we just got to, got to find that middle point of that region. And we, t and we do that by looking at these masks and the value of these masks for that sort of, sort of corresponding region. And then I've taken the, the width and the, and, and the height and I've kind of smushed them down, but back in the full example, the width and the height are sort of defined by these, these bars as well. And just to be complete, to finish this math off here, if we were just to go run that through the calculator, we're going to get a value of 0 0.5, or 0 0.75, sorry. And that 0 0.75 is 3 quarters up the screen. And we can confirm that by coming into our mask node here, and we can look at our Y value is set to 0 0.75. So I switch back to our full example here, and what I'll do is I'll put all these, uh, for all these, all these mask nodes, so it's only these mask nodes here that have any of these expressions in them. So I'll just list all these in the description if anyone wanted to, to go and sort of analyze them a bit further. So let's just take a look at one more thing. That all these masks down here, these are masks that define these bars. So remember, there's five of these masks. One, two, three, four, and five. And these ones are pretty straightforward. So let's just take, let's just zoom in on this region a little bit here. I'm going to take a look at our mask bar. Uh, you know what I'll do actually before? I'm just going to move this background up here just so we see only the, the bar masks. So the green one that you see highlighted here, that's my bar vertical left. So remember what this center point defines here. It's this, if we look at this control here, it's, it's this little red square right here. That's, that's the point that we're defining. So if we look at our X and Y coordinates for this one here, it's bar vertical left. So that's a one-to-one -one mapping essentially with the control and 0 0.5, which is halfway up the screen. So that one's pretty straightforward. 
Now notice for the thickness here. So I have the thickness, which is uh, MC thickness. So that's looking at the thickness value over here for my control. I have this bar thickness, which is 0 .00 or 0 0.015. And I also have this multiplier here, which is a multiplier dependent on the resolution of the screen. So if you put the same value, you're going to be kind of at the whim of the aspect ratio. And what I mean by that is, if you, if, you, if, you, if you think about it, this point here is 0 and all the way over here is 1. Well, that's a lot further distance than 0 to 1 up here. So if you put that value that's equal for thickness for the vertical and the horizontal bars, you'll get kind of fatter vertical bars, essentially. So that's what that multiplier is for. And that's only for this bar on the left and this bar on the right. If we look at one of these bars down here, for example, so I'll take this one on the left. So that's bar horizontal left. And we see our center point is right here. And that center point is MC bar vertical left divided by 2. So bar vertical left is this value here. So 0.33 by default. We divide it by 2. So that's our x value there. And then the y value is MC bar horizontal left. So that's a one-to-one -one mapping to this control here that slides it up, to, up and down. And so that defines the center point. We also have to define the width because we don't want this to stretch across the whole screen. It's going to kind of stop here. So the width of this is going to be, in this case, bar vertical left, which is where this one sits here. And then the thickness is just MC dot thickness with no multiplier. So the multiplier I've only added for these vertical bars here. So I'm going to add these mask expressions back into the description. The final thing I want to talk about is doing transforms with your clip sort of underneath these little spaces here. So this clip here, for example, if I bring up my control, this clip here, it's not just a little oceanscape. If I take this vertical bar right and kind of move it over, we see that there's this surfer here. Well, maybe I want that surfer centered in here. So if I wanted to do something like that, what I could do is I could take this transform node. I'll take that transform node and I'll put it just after the clip here. I'm going to break this link here with the mask and I'm going to feed this mask into this transform node. And what I can do there is now I can take this transform node. So now because I have this transform selected, this control here, I can sort of pick and I can kind of drag it over here. I can scale it if I want by the size control. And I can kind of do whatever I want in terms of animations. I could, I could get pretty complex if I wanted here, if, if, if I wanted to here. Just keep in mind that because I've done a transform, now this green outline here is showing the outline of the clip. So if I were to come back to my control node here and take this vertical bar right and move it over too far, oops, sorry, vertical bar right, and I move it over too far, well, there we go. I've kind of run out of clips. So just keep that in mind that you'll have to sort of deal with that as you transform these clips. But that's a quick way that you can kind of get exactly what you want in each of these little segments here. So that's it, folks. For those that are comfortable with math, this would have been probably pretty straightforward. For those of you that aren't com comfortable with math, it might just take a little bit of time of sort of sitting down and sort of working through those expressions and really figuring out exactly what they're doing. And the best way to do that is just to really dive in and, and, and do it, essentially. So that's all I have for today. All the best, and we'll talk to you all soon.